Hello, welcome to lecture six. We're going to start talking about statistical inference and hypothesis testing. We'll talk about a specific test to compare mean values, and we'll talk about the importance of understanding whether observations are independent or dependent when we do hypothesis tests. So a little bit about reviewing populations and samples. Remember, we use different notation to decipher what we mean by the sample versus the population. For samples, we typically use letters like N and S. For populations, we tend to use Greek letters like mu and sigma. And so here, the number of observations for the population might be capital N, lowercase n, for the sample. The mean is mu for the population. The mean is mu sub y bar, or just y bar, for the sample. The variance is sigma squared for the population, or s squared for the sample. And remember, if we take the square root, we can get the standard deviation of the population to be sigma, or the sample statistic s. The standard deviation, remember, is just the variability or the scatter in your data. The standard deviation, little s, can be taken as a square root of everything in this formula. If we know what n is, how many samples we have, we can know what each yi value is. That's the ith observation of some variable y that we're interested in. And we know the mean value y bar. We can add up the differences between each observation minus their mean, square it, divide by n minus 1 and take the square root, and we can calculate the standard deviation. Now, once we have the standard deviation, we might be interested in the standard error. So this is the measure of how well you know the true mean of a population. And so in this case, we could denote that sigma sub y bar, or just the standard error, and we can take that by the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. We need to know these values, like standard error and the mean, to do tests of significance. This is a procedure for comparing observed data with some claim we know or whose truth we want to assess. So we could say that the claim is a statement about a parameter like the population mean mu or some population proportion p. And we express these results of a significant test in, in terms of the probability, what we call the p-value. And this p-value measures how well the data and the claim agree. We're going to do a lot of these in this class, looking at the tests of significance of the different variables. Hypothesis testing is really the way that we can do statistical inference. A null hypothesis we can assume to be true. We denote the null hypothesis usually with h sub 0. Uh, this is what we're testing. This is usually a statement that the population parameter has a specific value. For example, I think that uh, the difference between two things are not less than zero. Or I think that uh, this person is not greater than six feet tall. That might be our null hypothesis. Our alternative hypothesis is the research hypothesis. And this is the one we try to use the data to establish or support. When we do hypothesis tests, we only have two outcomes. We can reject the null hypothesis that is, the data support the alternative hypothesis, or we can fail to reject, or we can accept the null hypothesis, that is, the data support the null hypothesis. This is an important table that looks at the different consequences of outcomes when we look at significant tests. We can draw different conclusions from these significant tests, but we really hope that our conclusions will be correct. But sometimes, even after doing a hypothesis test, our conclusion can be wrong. And so this is where type 1 error and type 2 error come in. We can have a matrix here where our null hypothesis might be true, and we fail to reject the null hypothesis in our test. Well, that's the correct decision. That probability can be represented by 1 minus alpha. Well, alpha is some level of significance that we're willing to stay. On the other hand, the null hypothesis might be true, but our statistical test might have rejected the null hypothesis. We call that type 1 error, and we denote the probability of that as alpha. 
Alpha for most of the world of statistics in natural resources and agriculture is typically set to 0 0.05. So that is to say we would expect to have a null hypothesis that's really true, but we reject the null hypothesis in our test about 5% of the time. On the other hand, we have a different kind of error, what we call type 2 error. So this is when our null hypothesis is false, but we fail to reject the null hypothesis in our statistical test. We denote that as beta. What we want to be is having the correct decision. That is to say, we want to reject the null hypothesis in our statistical test when in actuality it's false. And that's what we call 1 minus beta, or what we also call the power of a test. The power of a test is the probability of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. The other, the type 1 error is represented by alpha. That is the probability of committing the, that type 1 error, rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it's true. This is a table we're going to come back to often in this class because it helps us to decipher many of the statistical tests that we'll run.